Good afternoon. Sorry for English, uh, but uh, it's a pleasure being here, you know, representing Microsoft. I was not in the keynote, but my friends told me that, you know, in the keynote, uh, somebody told that even Microsoft is here today. So, yeah, we have several sessions. <laughs> it's good. Um, it's not very common that you guys hear Microsoft, uh, what we are doing, how we are doing, but uh, my name is Cem Kubilay. I'm based in Turkey and covering Central and Eastern Europe region of Microsoft for advanced analytics and big data. Uh, so I want to I wanna put a little bit business context to uh, what we do with the analytics, okay, and why we are doing it. Why does it, what does it mean? You know, I think you are all developers here, right? Mostly. So that's great, but you know, uh, I had been a developer for a long time, uh, but understanding the business context is totally a different story. Why we are doing that? What's gonna happen if we build a recommendation engine? What we are gonna happen if we predict the future which customers will churn or how much revenue we are going to generate, right? So in terms of that, uh, I just want to talk about a little bit around digital transformation. How many of you heard this word digital transformation? A lot. Okay, not, not too much, but digital transformation is these days uh, considered as the next industrial evolution. So moving from the existing electronics environment from personal computing uh, to the next generation of integrating the systems together and using advanced analytics technologies together with these capabilities of the increasing CPU power and increasing data volume is moving us to the next generation of computing and also transforming our businesses from the existing traditional decision-making process into a data-driven decision-making process, okay? There is a lot of social comment about this. You know, uh, people say that the <clears throat> uh, industrial evolution actually killed a lot of uh, workforce of blue-color people, you know, really doing the work. You know, they, re now they say that the Machine learning will kill the white collar people and then how we are going to distribute the wealth. Yeah? That's, that's another story, but that's uh, what happens uh, right now. Why it's important? Uh, you know, again, putting the business context around it, I think it's important to understand customers or the companies who is going through a digital transformation uh, has a huge impact on their business performance. I don't know how much important this is for you, but I think it's important to understand why we are doing this, why we are pushing these uh, analytics technologies for, for the companies. So this is a Gartner report saying that the companies uh, investing into machine learning and advanced analytics out of just optimizing their processes, but building new services, new products, and um, making a differentiated service is really generating higher profit and higher revenue for the companies and changing actually how the a specific industry they are in is working at all. But this doesn't happen if you are a follower. If you follow uh, what has been done already, it doesn't make a lot of sense because everybody uh, has, has already been started doing that. Think about Uber. Right? How many co uh, companies or how many people thought about Uber before? Uber is famous because they did it for the first time and they are growing rapidly. So there, right now there are a lot of similar services, but everybody knows Uber. So it's like that. You know, whenever I go and talk to the customers, they say, can you give me examples of the other customers doing the similar thing? I say, why do you want examples? We have a lot. But why, do, why don't you try to become the first one? Okay? If you are going to be the first one, you are going to gain the market share. That's important. Okay, and, and the other thing is, uh, you are all IT professionals, but businesses are changing. You know, uh, the money 
the investment for the IT started coming from uh, more business people, not from IT. Actually, they started seeing IT as a blocker to reinvent their business processes. So we are all developers, right? If we get a task to develop something, oh, we can, we can imagine the future and we can do a lot of stuff, you know. We, we can build it from one version to another one to another one, and you know, it never ends. But the business needs quick decisions, quick tools, quick implementations. And they don't want to wait IT to come up with the fantastic stuff. So I, I was, I'm in the big data industry for more than 10 years right now. Uh, when I was working for my previous company, the CTO of the company told one thing. If you want to build a data warehouse, if you put two data modelers into the room, okay, they can come up one year later with a fantastic data model, but all the business processes has been changed in one year. So it doesn't make any sense. They should start from scratch. So we don't want to be there. That's why we need to be agile. We need to generate business value. As long as we generate business value, we as the developers become more valuable for the, for the companies. Okay? So what are we doing in Microsoft? So how many of you know the CEO of Microsoft? Nobody, OK, <laughs> that's great. Uh, how many, know, how many of you know Bill Gates? You all know, right? You know, he changed the competing. Uh, how many of you know Steve Ballmer? Wow, the previous CEO. How many of you know Satya Nadella? Oh, so you know the CEO of the company? That's great. Yeah. Satya Nadella is the CEO of Microsoft for two years right now. And you cannot imagine what happened to Microsoft in that two years. We have seen a rapid change in every everywhere. So you know, we are having a lot of applications for iOS and Android, right? You use them, yeah, yeah, sure. Most probably you use Outlook everywhere, yeah? So we are the number one company worldwide last year, developing applications for iOS and Android, the number of applications we developed. So most probably you didn't know that, but what we are doing is we are going through a digital transformation for the companies. And when we look at it, we have three pillars for that. We want to create more personalized computing. Windows 10 is there. Uh, I have seen a lot of Mac users here. That's OK. But Windows 10 is the most personalized and secure operating system we have ever built so far. The other thing, reinvent productivity. Reinvent productivity doesn't mean that we are going to run all these our productivity tools only on Office, or only on Microsoft platform. So we brought Office to everywhere. And then we are working on building, and we already built the most intelligent cloud. So the cloud actually gives us the power of sharing all the information all across. I'm going to show you something about what we are doing in the cloud for advanced analytics. But these are the three major topics and the pillars that we are working on. And guess what? We are having a lot and a lot of open source implementations, and we have a lot of open source uh, code running in our cloud. I'm gonna, uh, I will have another session. I will go through what it means, uh, but uh, I, I'm going to leave it there. So talking about that, we are working on this digital transformation in order to optimize and build a systems of intelligence for the companies for transforming their product, engage their customers more, optimize their operations, and empower their people. So if we can manage, or if the customers can manage to enhance their system in those four pillars, they will build an automated system, almost an automated system, to move the data from one platform to another to make decisions across uh, all the company, to share those decisions with the tools necessary with every people working in the company, develop new services and the differentiated products for their industry. So these are the three big trends for the digital transformation. Do you agree or not? Right? We see big data. Cloud, 
and analytics, the intelligence part. So I used to speak in a lot of conferences. The problem that I have, you know, a uh, few years back when we talked about big data, it was really hype, right? You know, I'm talking about big data for six years right now, but until last two years, we haven't seen any value from big data. Did any of you has did anything about in the Hadoop platforms? No? Any of you have seen any value so far? No? How is it differentiated? You, you have seen value, right? That's great. Uh, but you are the only one. <laughs> so uh, now it's changing. Last two years, big data got a, a big step forward. You know, with the uh, streaming, with the uh, usage of unstructured data, with the, the new technologies like Spark in memory capabilities, now we can really utilize the performance underneath and we can utilize the big data platform. Cloud is one of the big players uh, right now, and we see a lot of customers are trying to do big data in the cloud because they don't want to invest a huge uh, server farm in order to try something. That cloud is really fail fast platform. You know, try, fail, try again, fail, try again, and find the best way. Okay, so it's becoming really important to fail fast these days, and the intelligence is the uh, most important part at the moment, how we are going to really utilize that data that we collect in the cloud, that we collect in the big data platforms. So when we talk about uh, intelligence, it comes to machine learning. How many of you have been in implemented any analytics model so far? Good, very well. So I, I will not go, to, I, I have seen a few slides that you have already been seeing uh, a lot of things. So, so what we are thinking about is, computer systems that become smarter. So what we are doing in Microsoft, actually we are integrating the uh, AI into each and every piece of our products. Even if the, the keyboard, this keyboard we have uh, been acquired and now deployed in the iOS uh, for uh, iPhone, has a neural network behind it. It's not just a keyboard anymore. It's your keyboard knows how you work, what you write, how you write. Okay? It's learning all the way. And we are integrating these kind of technologies all across our platforms right now. So making it smarter and smarter and smarter. Did you know that we recently put a team together of 5,000 people for artificial intelligence? 5,000 people, developers in Microsoft headquarters, are working for artificial intelligence and machine learning. I'm going to show a few of those uh, coming out. So the biggest challenge in the machine learning part is the data, right? Uh, collecting the data, collecting the right data, um, training the model with the right data sets, and all, a, a, every a column uh, makes sense. So this is the biggest challenge at the moment. But using the big data technologies, actually, we can get rid of a lot of those challenges because we can just put all the data in one data lake and then um, a, crunch it together to understand which data makes sense and which data doesn't make sense. So that's why it's really becoming useful, the big data scenarios. Um, how many of you has failed because of data issues in a machine learning environment? Quite a bit, right? Quite a bit, that's true. You know, <laughs> before we start doing anything, we look at the data. If the data doesn't make sense, the outcome doesn't make sense. So we need to make sure that we get all the necessary data and collect all that information for uh, analyzing a, or running a machine learning algorithm. So it needs to be relevant, it needs to be connected, and it needs to be accurate and enough of it. So you cannot just run machine learning on top of few, few data sets, few rows of data. Uh, there are work questions and sharp questions that you can answer, for sure. Uh, so uh, the work questions, what we mean is the I can't be answers with a name or a number. So 
What does it mean? What, what can my data tell to me? And the sharp questions are, how many of those I'm going to sell in the future? Okay. So these are the two areas, actually, maybe, then goes into supervised and unsupervised learning. So how many of you know the difference between? Yeah, okay, so if, if we just summarize it, it's supervised learning is something that you have a data set with a flag that uh, indicates something that happened already uh, with a label column. You know, thinking about, let's give you a, a telco example from real life. You know, if you are trying to predict churn, okay, you already have uh, the customers churned and their historical data. So using the historical data and using the flag of churned, you can train your model and understand the pattern of those churned customers. Uh, and this is called supervised learning. Unsupervised learning, you don't have a flag. You don't know. Okay? And you, you do some clustering, then you do some anomaly detection, uh, and this, this goes into the uh, unsupervised learning area. So in one part, the training data set has a label column showing you these customers has been gone already, and these are the patterns, or these are the data. So our job is to identify the pattern from those label columns. The biggest problem, the biggest problem in the businesses is when you go to the customer and ask, hey, okay, uh, tell me what you want to do. They say, I don't know what I, want, what I want to do. How many of you faced this issue before? All of you, right? Almost. So I go to the customer and say, hey, great, you know, you called me to talk about analytics. So what do you want to do? They say, I don't know. They really don't know what to do. They say, okay, come up with an idea. So we go there and come up with idea, okay, telco or banking, let's put it banking. So we can do credit uh, scoring for you. They said, we already do that. Oh my God, so you don't have an idea, but you already do that. Why do you do that then? Okay, you have something, you have a business problem. Um, uh, tell me uh, something else. You know, we can do customer segmentation. Ah, okay, we have a kind of customer segmentation already. So I think the problem there is, what we need to do is, instead of going to the customer saying that, hey, okay, uh, here are the things that we can do for you, we need to customize the question a little bit differently and say, hey, you know what? You, you the bank, you have your priorities. What is the biggest pain point in your organization right now? When we ask this question, actually, uh, I, I have struggled with this a lot in one of the countries that I cover far away from here. But So we said, what is the problem? What are you trying to solve in your organization? They come up with three things. One of them is total IT related. And the two things they said, you know what? We have huge toxic loans, toxic credits. We want to get rid of them, or we want to reduce that, so which means that they give credit but they don't get the payment back. So the money is gone. Okay? The second thing is we do marketing. We send offers to everybody, but we want to do that more targeted. That's good. You know, I, I'm recently working in one of the uh, retailers, big retailers, and they said, hey, you know what? The idea of us is to increase our revenue by adding one additional item into the basket of the customer. Uh, from a category which they have never bought before. Fantastic idea, right? Great. But then when we go, went to the chief marketing officer, he said, this is great, but if I do that to everybody with a discounted offer, I use $50 million per year because of the discount. $50 million. Okay? I don't want to do that with everybody. But then it goes to another step of uh, analyzing the relevant customers for that specific discount to increase, uh, to increase uh, the revenue. So then it goes to uh, the decision. If you have a toxic credit problem, then it goes to uh, credit risk. So when we do the credit risk, we use some technologies like, hey, OK, clustering, classification, or regression. Okay. Uh, if it goes to customer segmentation, we say, 
you need to use some uh, clustering algorithm to see how your customers are grouped together, uh, and then maybe the outliers as well. So asking the questions for business, then it, you, you can convert it into a, a business-relevant conversation with the uh, IT. So, data scientist, the guys who earns the most of the money right now, right? In, in the IT industry, these are the highest paid people at the moment, data scientists. So, uh, if, if you go to US, I don't know what is the situation here in Ukraine, but if you go to US, if you say, I'm a data scientist, oh my God, you know, you will ha you earn, earn hell amount of money. Uh, and this, this is generally the process. So you need to have a data scientist, you need to understand people who can play with the data, you need to have a person who understands the business, and then the application development and data management. Quick question, how many of you failed to move a data model, an analytical model, into production? You never failed. How many of you failed to make it running every month or every, uh, every quarter, right? You, di you did. How many of you failed to make it uh, in, in the application in real time? Okay. How many of you tried it in real time? Okay. So what is the problem here? Any idea? Sorry? Okay, but that's for training. Is it for really execution or is it for real running the model? If you have a trained model, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the generic problem in the data analysis or data mining or machine learning so far was that's a batch work. Everybody thinks that it's a batch work. Actually, it's not. It shouldn't be, right? So what we are trying to do in Microsoft is actually bring that intelligence capability into real application life cycle. Okay? So think about a call center. What happens while a call center agent in real time, while talking to a customer, based on the answers he or she gets, can predict the probability of a churn? And based on that probability, offer something to the customer in real time, okay? This is where we are going. This is what we are doing right now in Microsoft. This is how we see the data analytics should come into life. It should go away from batch. It should be in real, real time. So we have we have technologies like Cortana intelligence in the cloud, and we have technologies like Microsoft R Server and SQL R services. Okay, I'm going to go high level and I'm going to then show you something. So the Cortana intelligence is a platform in our cloud covering all, everything almost you need from getting the data, storing it in the data lake or in a structured way, running either streaming data in uh, analytics in real time or machine learning or crunching the data lake, uh, the data in the data lake with analytics and then visualizing it or automating a response with the bot framework. Okay? How many of you heard this bot story? No? Okay. So I encourage you to go and check what bot framework can do. I travel every week, every week somewhere. I came yesterday from Prague here. Uh, bot is something like this. If you open Skype, there's a Skyscanner bot. Actually, it's like a human being uh, on the other side of the computer. You just say, hey, I want to fly from Prague uh, to Kiev. It responds, okay, when do you want to fly? Say, 
Okay, give me the best flight for 13th of October. It gives me a list of the flights and asks, hey, okay, there's a huge list of the flights. What time is the most convenient time for you? I say, okay, in the evening. I say, okay, there is these flights. Do you want to book? And I say, okay, book me, check airlines. And it just goes and books me the flight. Okay. One customer, actually here in Ukraine, which we are working together, they want to do social media analysis. They want to collect the data from social media about their company in real time, do the sentiment analysis in real time to see, hey, okay, how is it going? What is these people are talking about? Use machine learning to optimize their response and use bot framework to send the response back to Twitter. Fully automated cycle of end-to-end -end analysis. I'm not going to give you the name of the customer. So this is Cortana intelligence in the cloud. Uh, it's really easy to uh, run anything that you want. I'm going to show you a few of those. Um, this is Azure Machine Learning. I'm going to go into details, but this is in the cloud, drag and drop kind of functionality with using best-in-class algorithms uh, in a web browser. You can deploy it as a web service, and then you can call it from anywhere. So you can get data from blobs, Hadoop, relational DB, or SQL Server on-prem into the cloud. We don't store it into the cloud if you don't put it, uh, if you keep it on a, in a SQL Server on-prem. Then we run our training, we deploy it as a web service, we deploy it as an API, and then you can call that API in real time. Okay? So you can send whatever the da data necessary for that, and then get the response back immediately. We also have cognitive services. How many of you heard that? Great. Cognitive, how many of you tried? OK. So it's interesting. Uh, these are the services, but I'm going to give you an example of what we are doing. So you go to the bank, a branch, OK? Uh, you get a queue number, right? You wait there until you, your number comes in. So some of our customers are starting doing something like this. When they go to the branch, you put your card to get the queue number. They say, OK. Let me see your face. You look at the face, so then we recognize you. We can match your face with the, uh, with the card number. That's easy. Then what we do is, if you are old, we prioritize you. If you are angry, not happy, we prioritize you. Yeah, the next time you come, you don't need to even put your card. We immediately give you a number. And some of our customers uh, in check, actually, this is uh, uh, so when you come into the room here, they take a picture of you. You don't even realize that. And when you leave the room, OK, they take another picture of you and they look at the difference of the emotions. And then they look at the customer service level. What happened? They go and analyze that. It's getting crazy, right? You know, but this, these, are, these are the things happening at the moment with the cognitive services. And these are all APIs that you, you the Java developers, uh, can utilize. Uh, then R. How many of you know that Microsoft are, is investing into R? Nobody, right? OK. So R, how many of you use R? Good. Um, OK. So R is the fastest growing analytics development language at the moment. Actually, if you look at the most frequently used uh, development languages, R alone specifically for analytics is number five. Number five, OK? So uh, last year, one and a half years ago, we acquired a company which makes R enterprise ready. How many of you know what is the problem with R? You know what's the problem with R? Can you tell us? OK. Uh, what else? Great. What else? Single threaded. OK, this is fantastic. So the problem with R, open source R, few things. 
You cannot run it on a big data computing platform. You cannot parallelize it, okay? And uh, it requires a lot of memory because it moves all the memory into, uh, into the machine. Microsoft R server solves all these problems that you mentioned, okay? Uh, it's, how? Okay, that's, that's a deep discussion, but we can, we can discuss it afterwards. How? It's a few things. First of all, uh, we used our own, uh, we developed our own parallelized packages. So if you have using a GLM function, for example, if you use RxGLM, it's totally parallelized. It's not parallelized on one computer, it's parallelized on uh, multiple computers. So if you have a Spark cluster behind the scenes, in each Spark node, we run a portion of our uh, analytics engine. So, okay, it's all distributed. Uh, the second thing is we don't move all the data into the memory. We load the data into the memory by batches. So we don't have the memory limitation, then it's, uh, we can run uh, everywhere. The second thing that we did is SQL Server R services. We put R in database, into the kernel of the database in SQL Server 2016. That makes us the number one database right now ahead of Oracle based on Gartner reports. So, I'm not going to go to the details, but it's the biggest ecosystem right now. So, what we are doing is using either cloud or on-prem Microsoft R on SQL Server R services, we basically enable enterprise-level um, analytics platform from Microsoft to you. Uh, the other thing is important for us is a hybrid approach, hybrid cloud. So you need to use your own data in your data center, but you can utilize the cloud services. And when we talk about cloud, Okay, we talk about platforms, the services. So you don't need to every time move your data into the cloud, but you can utilize the services. For example, for IoT, we have the event hubs or the IoT hub, and then stream analytics, you can use them, and the data can recite on-prem. You don't need to think about how to develop a streaming engine or how to develop a machine learning engine. So I'm not going to go to this. Yeah, these are some customer examples, but I want to show you something else. OK. This is Cortana Intelligence Gallery. OK. Just to let you know, and you can use this. There are a lot of already pre-built and pre-packaged solutions here as you can see, you know, getting started with deep neural networks in the cloud, data mining, presidential campaign finance data. You know, there are a lot of developers has already been done something and published it here. So what you can do, for example, here, if you want to do a credit risk prediction, you can click on that, and then you can go and open it in the studio, in the Azure ML studio, and you can see a lot of the detailed description of what's going on, what the model looks like, and what is the outcome, how does it work, and all this necessary information. The other thing is prepackaged solutions. So we have several different of those. If you click or see all, you can see them but we are working with some customers doing predictive maintenance for a, a plane engines. So we are doing some IT anomaly insights, which basically means that you have a farm of servers. Those servers are sending messages in real time, and we get all this data from those uh, servers and analyze if there is any problem with that. And stream analysis with Azure ML. This doesn't make sense with the name, but if you go to the details, it makes a lot of uh, sense. So when you click deploy here, okay, what it does is using your subscription, it generates behind the scenes all these components, including the dashboarding piece of it, and then it enables you to collect any data. So basically, this is a, a solution already prepackaged and built for Twitter streaming. So you can, let's try.
think I'm already signed in. So what you need to do is you just need to give the name uh, for, for your work, uh, for your streaming engine and everything. Then you can immediately uh, collect the data. 10 minutes, good, we have enough time. So this is Azure, Azure Machine Learning Studio. You can just uh, join this, you can just uh, sign up for free. You have 10 gigabytes of free space. Okay, you can start building your models here and you can start testing it without uh, any, any fee that you need to pay. Of course, it's limited in terms of uh, processing power, but you can just experiment it. Here is one experiment that I want to show. So this is basically a regression model to to analyze uh, energy demand or energy usage for every hour and every day of next month. Okay? So if you look at this, this is very simple. You just need to drag and drop. Uh, once you upload your data here, you can just drag and drop. And then you can just click remove this. You can just connect the data with this one. Okay, and you can split it. You can see the parameters here, how to split it. You can see the algorithms, already prepackaged built-in algorithms here. So initialize model, they are all grouped under different things. So if you, you want to do classification, for example, here we have the algorithms. So you can just drag and drop what you want to use. And here are some regression class, regression algorithms that we already put in. If you want to build a new experiment, what you need to do is just click here new. You can utilize one of the prepackaged and pre-built models here. See how people did some uh, binary classification or credit risk prediction or direct marketing. Uh, so you can just see what you can do. I can just click on blank and start from scratch building your model like this one. Okay? This is how easy it is. Go to uh, studio.azureml.net and then you can sign up for free and start using it with your data with, for your experiment. This is the easy part. What we do differently is basically when you build a model let me see if I have any this one Okay. You can set it up as a web service. So let's run it for, for the first time, and then we can set it up as a web service. Ah, oh, sorry. This is wrong, but anyway. Now it's running, it executed, so I can, I can actually look at what is the, if I click right here, I can visualize what is the outcome looks like. So here is the day, hour, month one, month two, it goes like this, and then I have my scored label here uh, for which label column I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, okay? So these, these, these are the predicted values here. So what I can do now, 
I can set it up as a predictive web service. So now it says, hey, okay, I have my model already. It's now ready. I just need to run it once. It says, okay, it works, done, and now deploy it as a web service. But when you deploy it as a web service, okay, you can actually get an API key, a request and response model, and if you go to configuration here, You can even test with some parameters you can put into the system. And here in the request and response mode, we have all necessary information using uh, with the URI, with the request header, sample uh, code for uh, calling the uh, web service, sample response, what we are going to get, and the input parameters, and here is the sample code as well. So you can have a C-sharp code, you can have the Python code, or R code, how to call this API from your applications. So this is, this is what we are doing right now. Bringing R services into SQL Server you can run a R code by calling a stored procedure. If you, may, if you deploy it in the machine learning studio, you can make a web service call into the environment with your parameters. You can get the result immediately, you know, like the churn uh, prediction, churn score, churn probability score, or the estimated next best offer for the customer. And you can immediately integrate it into your tools. So, the idea is moving the machine learning and data mining from being a batch processed environment into an application level integrated tool set. So each and every application become a smarter application and each and every conversation becomes a, a more intelligent and smarter conversation with the customers immediately. So this is what we are doing in Microsoft. This is how we are integrated with the open source community. I will have another uh, session, I think just after this one or the other one. Uh, there's a break right now, yeah? And then I will be on stage. I'm gonna talk about mostly uh, what is the future? What's going to happen? And why these technologies makes more sense and how we use these, some of these technologies with some of our customers. Thank you.